Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome back to RPG at Day 2018, August the 2nd, Thursday, and the question for the day is... Dun, what? Dun, dun. <laughs> okay, I'll have to give you a three count pause for your dun dun dun. Would you like to try that again? Yes. Dun dun dun. <laughs> what do you look for in an RPG? What is it that, what's your whistle for a role playing game? Remember, you have to introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Kelly, and I would say one of the things that I look in is is for the, the, a, a variety, not the same story over and over. Oh, look, we go into the dungeon and we, you know, get the loot. Well, I'm all for that. Look, nice! But, um... It's it's nice to to mix it up. It's I look for a versatility in an RPG. I look for the ability to craft characters as opposed to just you know um, operate one. You know I want to play that character and I want the versatility to have different types of characters. So. I think versatility is, is one of the biggest things for me. That's solid. Um, my name is Jocelyn, and I'm best known as Madame Askew. I perform at a lot of conventions across the United States and into Canada. Uh, you can find me online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Madame Askew, and at my Patreon also at Madame Askew. Um, and I'm, I love role-playing games. I do improv professionally, so it's really fun for me to fall into the RPG, the tabletop with my friends. Um, so when I'm looking at new RPGs, or, or new to me, because I like older RPGs as well, then I'm always looking for the ability to tell organic stories that are not constrained just by the stats. So I don't like games that are only about the fight scenes and everything in between is like, and then stuff happens. Now we're fighting trolls again. Now I like to fight trolls if they're bad trolls because I pretty much cannot bring myself to play an evil character. It's a character flaw on my part. Um, so I'm always a neutral or, or good character, but, um, even when I'm slightly, like, on the dark side, I'm still more, like, neutral and not actually bad. So, um, I like fights. I like the combat. I like the intricacies of that, but it's no fun for me if there isn't the space to tell a good story and develop the characters. So I like versatility, like Kelly was saying, but I also really want a strong storytelling component. One of the things I love about 5th edition D&D is that it rewards that aspect of gameplay. I know when I've played other versions of D&D, there's no reward, so it depends on your game group a lot and whether they're going to have patience for storytelling and character development. Um, So previously, I was all about White Wolf, which really rewards that kind of dynamic. And when I look at games, I'm always checking, is there going to be the ability to do good storytelling and character development? Um, So those are the first things I look for. I have a laundry list (laughs) for that. (laughs) So you like to put the R-O-L-E back into a game as opposed to just R-O-L-L. Yeah, no, it's... I will tell a story on myself. Um, I I used to game master a game called Unhallowed Metropolis, which is sort of a steampunk 
um, game. It's more retro futuristic. There's zombies. I really like the game. The mechanics are fine, challenging, but <laughs> it's very deadly if you play it just as written. Mm -hmm. So I house ruled a lot of things. But I was more interested in the world building and the character and the storytelling. So there were a lot of sessions where my players got used to the fact that we might never pull out dice. That I might just be, I would ask them to tell me what they did. And, and some players are really good at that situation and they can roll with it. They can role play the <laughs> hell out of those things. To pardon the pun. But I did have one player who was like, well, what dice do I roll? I'm like, just tell me yes or no, dude. I asked you a yes or no <laughs> question. Just need a yes or no answer. Do you open the door or do you not open the door? There are no dice rolls for door opening. <laughs> if you make me roll dice, you're going to lose a hand. There's you're going to regret it. Dice. There will be a critical <laughs> failure. <laughs> we so still have to play Dresden. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and I would love to roll and uh, play Unhallowed Metropolis again, but I have never played it, so I would be very intrigued. Yeah. It's an awesome setting. I mean, the mere fact you pay guys to watch family members' bodies so they don't yeah. come back to life. No, the setting is really great. The rules are like, and you'll roll up a new character every time because it's so deadly, deadly. Yeah. which is why I house rule a lot of things. But it is a gorgeous book. It's gorgeous. Um, I have both the original and the expanded additional content because I'm a big fan of that mm -hmm. setting. So for me, I'm going to limit myself to two things. Okay. Okay. So what do I look for in an RPG is one, a great theme. What is the theme of the role-playing game? Because mm -hmm. every role-playing game has got to have a theme. Like, yeah. You know, like fantasy, Star Wars. Yeah. Like Edge of Empire, you're going to be that Magic. Firefly scum and villainy group. Yes. You know, Force and Destiny, we're getting Jedis and Sith. So theme is a big one because that helps everyone get into character because you know what costume you're putting on right, right, right after right. that. The second one I really love, especially as a GM, is player fiat. Giving the players permission to take control of themselves and the world while they play. Because there's so many games where your players show up to just battle paper targets because they don't think they can control anything other than their dice rolls. Giving them games like Fate, where you can throw a chip and you can make a huge world-changing event happen, I, I'm a huge fan of that. Because it makes the player own the story as much as the GM. And come on, as GMs, we all know, we love it when the players take ownership. Yeah, I like that collaboration. That you can uh, employ mm -hmm. in a scenario. So, like, if I do a successful role, it can create an aspect for the situation that other players can or on. the game master can use mm -hmm. to affect the situation further. That's it, why it does go back to fate is one of those ones where the GM will bribe you to let the world do these things because mm -hmm. it makes sense and it's in your characters. So fate seems to me like it's not necessarily the best starter RPG. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. fate tricky. is definitely an advanced RPG in my opinion because you know you want to teach people with easier stuff like White Wolf. Their system was or great. Star Wars, because Star, Star Wars, Wars is, is good. similar with the storytelling dice. It kind of gives, because yeah. you also have the light and dark side points that you can flip. That players can to, make choices and so change the environment for their It's also advantage. kind of a very good intro, because, oh, well, I'm going to I'm gonna tap this aspect. If I want to be more better, I I'm can gonna flip a light side this point light and side increase point. my... my cause because the force is saying this is going to happen, which is always great. And then as a GM, in, in that regards, if I want them not to kill the big bad in one shot, I can always flip a dark side point and make it more difficult for them to take that shot. So the big bad survives more than one alpha strike. Which is good. Because for a big boss fight, you want them to take more than one hit for yes. a big cinematic, crunchy, here's the big boss and die hard. You know, you don't just see McLean kill him in one shot. He has to work for it. You That's mean right. like Glass Staff? <laughs> yeah. Like last time, the big bad in one Remember, shot. Remember, you guys all stood there waiting. <laughs> yes. We're like arguing, and she just goes in and shoots a guy with natural twenty. Boom, guy's dead. That was that, that was, was like <laughs> it was funny, but it was absolutely deflating. Deflating because mm -hmm. you do want those big bosses mm -hmm. to have 
that weight of challenge to them. Mm-hmm. And on the starter set, when we played that game, it would have been horrible if I did the same thing you guys did, holding action, because it would have been that scene from American Gods, when the Viking walks up on the beach and the wall of arrows hits him and he just dies. Oh my god. Because that's what happened to Glassstaff. That is a great... <laughs> Uh, that's a great scene in American Gods. And also, that is what happened to yeah. God's staff. As I've, I've quoted that gif on Facebook, that when you see that gif, I'm like, that's why holding action sucks in role-playing games. Yes. <laughs> because both sides, would you like an army of goblins holding their action to fire arrows? No. Like a goblin can hold its action. You <laughs> know. It can. No, most aren't that patient. <laughs> no, most GMs love their players enough not to kill them instantly by doing it. Thank you, GMs. Because a goblin can like naturally take their shot. They have that free hide like a rogue, and then they can take the shot with advantage the next turn, oh, and you all die. No, instead so they just send imps after them. Well, there yeah. is that. So that's that's what I love about RPGs, is, is, this, is you know when I'm looking for an RPG, I want to make sure it's got a good theme, and the players have control over a little more than just what they're, they're rolling on the dice. That's awesome. Alrighty, guys. Thank you for listening. Make sure to share on hashtag RPG2018. I almost said 16. I don't know why, but 2018. And make sure you comment, share what you like, share what you don't like. You know, hey, what is it that you look for in an RPG besides a really cool cover? Many of us have hey, fallen our- for that trick. And then you open it and you go, this is unplayable. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. All GMs. Read reviews, watch other people play real plays on podcasts, find out before you buy the RPG. It's not but 1995 anymore. We have the internet. There are YouTube videos of games. It's oh, yes. great. But if you do fall into it and you but wind up getting one that just is unplayable, know that you have the ability to change it for the better. <laughs> Make That's your true. own rule. And sure. as a GM, you can follow the serial numbers off that shit and steal it for other RPGs. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> Solid. Alrighty, guys. Thank you for listening. Is Kelly up for one more? Yeah. Okay. And Kate. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and to the Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening. Ravensdale Publishing presents Villains and Henchmen. Hello, Ravensdale Publishing fans, new and old. Ben and Sarah here, and we're excited to welcome you to the Villains and Henchmen Kickstarter campaign. Have you ever wanted to be a villain? Do you dream of harnessing the power of a storm? Or flexing super-powered muscles? Or bending reality to your whim? These powers and more are within your grasp in Villains and Henchmen. In this cooperative game for one to four players, you must break a fellow villain out of maximum security prison. Along the way, you'll defeat meddling heroes, overcome troublesome obstacles, and plow through unsuspecting guards. Of course, the good guys aren't just going to sit around while you waltz in and grab your villainous buddy. Over a dozen different event cards spur heroic responses and maintain the pulse-pounding action. No matter which prison you're attacking, or which heroes are in your way, Scheming to have the right powers for the job is a must. You may have to shapeshift into a stronger form, phase through a steel door, 
or protect the team with a well-timed force field. There is no single path to success. Adaptability and teamwork are critical to victory. But remember, you are playing bad guys. If the prison is defeated, one of you will claim bragging rights as a true villain, relegating the others to mere henchmen. For only $40, you can swipe a copy of this game, plus all three stretch goals unlocked during the campaign. We also have some cool expansions and paid add-ons, as well as some art and other collectibles that you can only get through this Kickstarter campaign. We can't wait to get villains and henchmen into your hands and hear all about your dastardly schemes. Whether you've been following us for years or only just found us, thank you so much for your support.